Yes, yes, so Hell is here. Today, we are back with another Dimash reaction, and this is Hello, the cover of Lionel Richie's famous song. I, like probably most people in the world, know this song inside out. I remember my mum telling me about the first time she heard it. It's a song that people remember. It's a very, very iconic song. This performance was from 2018 from The Singer, and this is the first performance of Dimash's that I'm seeing where I know the original song beforehand without doing any extra research. The other covers I've seen Dimash do so far are SOS and Sinful Passion, but I didn't already know those original songs. I have received a fair few requests for this one, not as many as some of his other songs, but I think it's fun sometimes to react to the less popular requests. But don't worry, I do plan on getting around to all of the more popular requests. So I'm beyond intrigued to see what Dimash does with this song. I'm ready for whatever Dimashifications might be in store for us, as we've seen with his other performances. So let's get straight into this one. Okay, interesting, interesting. It's cool to see him sing in English again. It's a very, very atmospheric opening so far, which makes sense considering the song. I think it's good to take a calmer approach to this one. We have this shimmering effect. With a sustained chord underneath. All right, so you know what my first question is gonna be. This instrument, you've taught me about the hobbies. So what's this instrument we're seeing? It's like a very cool woodwind instrument. It sounds a bit like a flute or a recorder and it's played downwards like a recorder would be unlike a flute, which is played sideways. And it looks wooden, is that wood? I'm gonna guess it's a Kazakh instrument. Either way, very cool to see. I like it when there's something unknown in these performances, especially when there's an instrument that I've never seen before. So from a harmonic perspective, the first thing is that we're in a different key to the original song. We're in D, whereas the original is in A. Which means that D is pretty much the furthest either side of A that you can go. So from the A here, it would be either here or here, depending on if we are moving up or downwards. We've seen in other performances by Dimash, especially Igor Krutoy's compositions, where they like to change key by a very small amount, such as a half step or one step. So this is the original key. Dan Winkle, huh? What have you been doing? And this is the key that we're in now. We can see that Dimash is starting at a lower pitch. So we might be thinking, why are you starting lower when he can sing so high? Surely he should be starting higher than the original to get to show this off. Well, if you start lower, really, it just means that you have more space to work with above. If you think of it in terms of the keyboard, you have more of the keyboard above your starting point. You can think of each note above him as a new opportunity that you can grow into throughout the performance, maybe. So by starting lower, you have more opportunity to move up and explore that higher register. Dimash being Dimash, I'm, I'm expecting him to be exploring that higher register. We haven't seen it so far. Overall, I'm getting quite a mystical feeling, almost an eerie performance, and I'll go into that in a second, but just here. Just that quick little woodwind, very airy. Maybe for me, because I don't know the instrument, subconsciously I'm feeling like I'm a bit in the unknown here, which to me will always create a bit of an eerie feel. But to add to that eerie feel, we have this chord on looking for. You're looking for 
Thus after he says four actually. There's a very subtle harmonic change here, but I think it's very, very impactful, especially considering how small it is. On looking for, we're expecting to hear a major version, a happy version of the overall key that we're in, because in this performance we're in D minor, so we're expecting to hear a D major chord. In the original, they're in A minor, and on looking for, we hear an A major chord. So anyone who knows the song is expecting to hear this. So in this case, we're expecting to hear that is what the chord sounds like. And we do get there eventually, but not before stopping off briefly at this discordant chord, which looks like this. And then these two notes here just slide down by a half step each to then give us the chord we're expecting. Such a small change, but it really is enough to throw you off just a tiny bit. It really, really, really stood out to me. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. But that's one thing that I love about covers of songs that you know already. It's their freedom to add in these little nuances. We could argue as well that by adding that in, it actually serves a purpose to emphasize the next thing that Dimash sings, which are the words, see it in your eyes. So in that chord, we had this note sliding down to here, which is exactly what Dimash is singing now on see it in your eyes. In the comments, many of you said that every single decision Dimash makes is for a reason, and I can fully believe that. This could be one of those examples. All right, let's carry on. I'm liking this arrangement so far. There are a lot of really quiet, sustained string notes in the background, creating a lot of suspensions where one note is held into another chord that changes and then eventually becomes part of that chord, creating a lot of subtle tension. Mm -hmm. What I was saying earlier about starting lower instead of higher, well, now he's moved up the octave, he's higher, and now we can see his more powerful chest voice. He should now go even higher in his chest voice, which is quite high. Yeah, I really like it. I do love the original song, so maybe that's playing a part, but I do think this arrangement and this version is very, very nice. Now we've seen the first real change to the music. These nice vocal runs that he's doing. Quite Eastern musical style, especially when accompanied by this woodwind instrument. It's a nice demashification of a very popular, iconic Western song. Going back to the fact we're in a different key and now Dimash can sing higher. The highest note of this phrase is here. Pretty high for your chest voice. In the original, it's I can see it in your which is so the difference is the original to Dimash up there. I think we can all agree it's a more powerful sound being in this key. Dimash can really utilize the power in his upper chest voice here. Is it me you're looking for? Then a bit further on, we have a new high from Dimash. <laughs> so before it was that and now it's here. And he's using a sort of a blended voice there, which is like a mix of his full chest voice and his falsetto. I'd like to just listen to the instrumentation underneath on the word kiss. Dreams of kiss your lips. It's another very, very subtle harmonic change to contribute towards this slightly more Eastern musical feel. Again, pointing towards the fluidity of the arrangement that when you do a cover of a song, you can have. And then here. He's not saying I love you in English. I'm gonna guess that's Chinese. Is that how you say I love you in Chinese? All right, let's carry on. Of 
cool instrument. That was a nice little section we just had, letting the instrument, which again I'm guessing is a Kazakh instrument, take centre stage. Dimash not singing at all. Finishing in Chinese there, I don't know what he said. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments what he whispered at the end there. A nice respectful finish considering he's singing in China. Yeah, I like that one. Such a cool, different, interesting, unique cover of such an iconic song that we all know. So let's just go over some final bits from that last section. We get this standout, completely separate section, if you will. Why I say separate is because it doesn't really have any semblance to Hello. The musical key technically is the same. We have these, these Ds droning that we can hear in the bass, but overall it's a lot more harmonically ambiguous, at least from a Western musical perspective. The scale or the mode, so the notes that he's choosing to sing that fit in with the overall scale or mode are now different. And I was gonna say, it seems like the lyrics have gone. But he's actually singing hello. Now I really like this, I almost find it quite funny in a way because to me the most iconic part of the original song is the hello. Hello. You know, super short, catchy, it's what everyone remembers. And this whole section, these melismas, a melisma is where you sing loads of notes just to one syllable. <laughs> is almost like a nod towards the most iconic part of the original song. The original song is called Hello. He's taken just Hello and made this huge display out of it. In my first reaction to Dimash, I think I called him a showman and this is an example of him being a showman. I think it's very cool. The purpose of this whole section is for Dimash to have freedom with his vocals. There's no changes in the music underneath. So it's all in him and he can do what he wants. And I really get a sense of this freedom here. <laughs> where he slides up to that note. So he's not rising in stepwise fashion, he slides up and then he chooses to not quite hit that note up there. He's singing ever so slightly underneath, which I do believe is a stylistic choice by him, which kind of removes the formality here. He's kind of saying, let me be free here. I'm just gonna do what I want. I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually improvised by him. And then at the end of that section, we return back to the recognizable version of Hello that we know. And you'll notice there how there was the drum beat. Well, it's very similar to Sinful Passion, the way that they transition from that same separate section with Dimash doing these running vocals back to the... Then we have this bit. 
not gonna lie I thought Dimash was gonna come in with the melody there but he's left it to the backing singers or if it's a backing track again he's taking the attention off of himself for some time and then of course he comes back in and goes on an even higher vocal rampage <laughs> And then here we have a very slight delay to arriving at a final destination chord. I don't know how I describe it, but it just kind of makes my face go, oh, it just stands out to me. And then right at the end. That note might not actually be as high as you think it might be. It is still high for a man, but by Dimash's standards it certainly isn't. But I think it seems much higher than it is because of the sheer power behind it. He's not just using his falsetto, which he'd use to go to the really high notes. He's using a blend here, and to use a blend and sing that extremely, extremely high, so he can generate a lot more power. Right, well, that was Hello. I love seeing stuff like that. I never in my life thought that I'd hear a cover of Hello that sounded like that. Let's leave it there. As always, thank you very much for watching. Would appreciate a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.